Hello and welcome back to Mystery of Israel Radio. I'm Tom Quinlan, your host. Uh, you can find archives of these messages at zionchristianpress.org slash radio. And you can reach out to me at Tom Quinlan at zionchristianpress.org. Today we are moving fully into Daniel chapter 12. It's a very short chapter. Before we open the scriptures, let's pray to the author of these scriptures. He would open our ears and help us to understand. So Lord, yes, may that be true, Lord. We need you to help us understand the way Daniel needed you to make him to understand these things. Lord, we don't want to have just intellectual knowledge. We want to have a heart understanding of what you're doing and why you're doing it, Lord. We want to feel what you're feeling and work with you be obedient to you in these days. Amen. So Daniel chapter 12, we spent some time last week talking about Daniel 12, 1 and 2, specifically in regards to the restoration of Israel and the resurrection of the dead and how these things tie in to the return of the Lord and the rapture of the church. The way I see it, it's the return of the Lord, the resurrection of the dead, the rapture of the church, and the restoration of Israel. It's all tied in together. We can see in Romans chapter 11 how Paul ties in the restoration of Israel to the resurrection of the dead. I believe he's getting that from here. So anyway, at that time... At the time when all the things from chapter 11 are taking place, this, this abomination that causes desolation, and all of these events that in quite a lot of detail describe the movements of the, this man of sin, this man who exalts himself above everything. At that time, Michael shall stand up. The great prince which stands for the children of your people, Daniel. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time, your people shall be delivered, everyone that shall be found written in the book. Remember what Jesus said to his disciples when they came back from being sent out to preach the gospel and to heal the sick and to raise the dead, to cast out demons. He said, Rejoice not that the demons are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are written in the book of life. Everyone that shall be found written in the book. And many of them, verse 2, many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall wake some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. When we see him, we will be like him. That is the blessed hope. They that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. But you, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. These things were written for those upon whom the end of the age has come. Shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Then I, Daniel, looked, and behold, there stood other two, the one on this side of the bank of the river and the other on that side of the bank of the river. 
And one said to the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, How long shall it be to the end of these wonders? Now who is this man clothed in linen that was upon the waters? Remember back to the beginning of this discourse that started in Daniel chapter 10. It said in 10.5, Then I lift up my eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins were girded with the fine gold of Euphaz. His body also was like the barrel, the chrysolite, and his face was as the appearance of lightning, and his eyes as lamps of fire, and his arms and his feet like in color to polished brass, and the voice of his words like the voice of a multitude. I believe this is the same man, the same certain man clothed in linen, that speaking to Daniel here, and one said to the man clothed in linen which was upon the waters of the river, How long shall it be to the end of these wonders? And I heard the man clothed in linen which was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven, and swear by him that lives for ever that it shall be for a time, times, and half a time. And when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. And I heard, but I understood not. Then said I, O my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And he said, Go your way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed until the time of the end. Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, and the abomination that maketh desolate set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. Blessed is he that waits and comes to the thousand three hundred and thirty-five days. But go your way till the end be, for you shall rest and stand in your lot, your inheritance, at the end of days. It shall be for a time, times, and half a time, and when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people. Do any of you feel like your power is being scattered? Paul says in a certain place, his strength is made perfect in weakness. God's plan for the end of the age is to demonstrate to the entire world that salvation is all of him and none of us. He is the author and the finisher of our salvation. What he is doing for Israel here in these last days is a picture of what he's doing for every single individual on the face of the earth. How is it possible that God could plan to bring the very nation that rejected him back into its place? Remember, if we flip over a few pages in Hosea, chapter 5, verse, verse 14. I will be unto Ephraim as a lion and as a young lion to the house of Judah. I, even I, will tear and go away and none shall rescue him. I will go and return to my place until they acknowledge their offense and seek my face. 
in their affliction. In this time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time, in their affliction they shall seek me early. The next verse, chapter 6, verse 1. Come, let us return to the Lord, for he has torn. Who is responsible for the difficulties in your life? Are you blaming them on someone else? He has torn. We have rejected his ways, and he has torn. Not for evil, but to bring us to that place of weakness, to scatter our power, that we might turn to him. He has torn, and he will heal us. He has smitten, and he will bind us up. Now that's Israel speaking in that passage. But those words could just as well come out of your mouth and my mouth. He has smitten, and he will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us. In the third day, he will raise us up, and we shall live in his sight. A day with the Lord is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is as a day. Israel, as a nation, rejected the Lord almost exactly 2,000 years ago. God has a plan to bring Israel back, to sift, to sift out those who reject the meek and lowly servant of the Lord, the meek and lowly king of Israel, who laid down his life for them. He's sifting us. He's sifting out our claims that God owes us something and making his salvation all of mercy. Can you receive that today? And can you be made to be a minister of that mercy, a minister of reconciliation that flows out of your being reconciled to God. We serve a good God, full of mercy and compassion. But to show that mercy and compassion, he has to bring us to the end of our strength. The church the called out ones of the end of the age that God has chosen to minister to Israel in the time of their affliction will have already passed through their affliction. They will be a humbled people. They will be a people that have been emptied of self and filled with the Lord. Will you be among them? Will you be one of those? Until next time, this is Mystery of Israel Radio.